Hey guys, it's Edith. So I have a share with you guys about a um, project that I made uh, using my laminator. So the reason I wanted to share it is because a lot of us who have laminators, we don't always use them and it seems a little hard like to figure out what to do. Um, you know, with our projects, most of them don't get laminated if you're doing like scrapbooking or anything like that. So obviously if you have a business then you might use it more often. But some of us, you know, bought it and then we don't really use it often. So I thought I would share the, um, what I used it for um, recently. And also like it's a really good DIY thing. So anyway, first though, let me share this with you guys. I'm making a mini album for my parents' anniversary and I... I was working on that before this, so my hands are dirty, so that's why. I just want to share that that's why, you know. <laughs> and um, so anyway, the game that I copycat um, was Telestration. So if you guys haven't played that, it's a lot of fun. If you don't have a laminating machine, I don't rec like don't go and buy one just to make the game. Obviously, that would be more expensive. But since I had the laminating machine, it was cheaper for me to do my own version of that game than um, than having you know to go and buy it for thirty something dollars. So um, we got introduced to the game because my sister Nanita, hi Nanita. Well, that's not her name, but anyway, that's her nickname. Um, she bought it for a friend of ours for Christmas and so we were playing that and we thought it was awesome and actually the idea to do it ourselves was um, from them, from my two sisters, um, Avi and and, and and so they um, they were the ones who were like well we should just make it or someone, I don't know, somebody else, maybe it was somebody else but I thought it was them, so anyway and we, we were gonna make it one afternoon when we wanted to play it and we didn't have it so but we ended up not doing it, we just borrowed it. But eventually I was home one day and I was like, wait, I should really make that game. It was a lot of fun and I want to make it. So what I did was I took out my laminator and the first thing that I did actually was I created the word, um, not the word, um, publisher files. And so um, what I did was I did two sheets in my publish in the in one document. And the first one had the title page and then they had... Um, the page after that and then so pages like the title page the subtitle page and then one and two and then so that was like what I did oh wait I don't want to show you guys this and so so basically it was this page this page this page and this page and then um the other sheet what happened was I just put two sketches and two guesses on it and and then I printed it out and if you guys will notice before I get into the game though, um, they have little tabs down here with the numbers on which page you're supposed to be on because sometimes you get lost. And so what happened was um, when I designed the page on there, I put a big old strip of numbers going all the way across to number 8. And then once I printed them out, I just cut out the tabs for each one. And that way they would correspond perfectly and they wouldn't overlap. So just wanted to point that out to you guys. Um, so anyway... This is the um, my game copy version that I made. So how Telestration works is, uh, I don't know if you guys remember like in elementary when you guys did the telephone game when somebody says something and then you pass it to the next person and the next person and then at the end it's completely different to what it was supposed to be. Well, that's how basically this game works, um, only it's with pictures and words. And so if you do buy the game, it's called Telestrations and it comes with, um, it comes with dry erase markers. These ones were not in that, but, because obviously I don't have the game, but they come with dry erase markers and a booklet and then some cards and a timer and a dice. And so what happens is like you roll the die, someone rolls the die, you get a number, you look at the card and it has words on it. And whatever number it is, that's the word that you have to use and then that's how you start the game. Um, you need the dry erase markers to draw and write and then um, you need your booklet obviously. And so what happens is um, you have the title page and then that one usually has a person's name. So um, when I made mine, it was supposed to be Lulustrations because <laughs> you know illustrations, Lulustrations, and Lulu is my nickname at home. So, um, it was supposed to be Lulustrations, but, um, 
it ended up being Lulu Starshins because I typed it in wrong and then my sister was with me she noticed we fixed it and then I did some changes and ended up losing it again because I undid it for some reason and and so when we printed it out and you know we put the whole thing together and then somebody noticed that it said Starshins again and we're like oh no another thing we didn't notice was that when I changed the font to brown I didn't change the exclamation point or the colon down here so anyway, the title page has October afternoon pattern paper in the back, like, but it was um, through my computer, like I printed it out that way. I didn't use actual paper from October afternoon. I put a circle and then the name thing on there, and that way people can put their name. And um, um, I made a little one right now so that you guys can see how it works. So, um, so it'd be my name is Lulu. Well, usually when I play, that's what I put. So, from the card, um, for our card, since we don't have the game, we use apples to apples cards. And so, and then we just use the cell phone timer. Um, and it says concert, so let's pretend that's the, that's the card that I got. It said concert. So, I write down the word, and then I have to make a drawing version. Obviously, I do not draw well, and you have to do this quickly because you get time, so you're not going to try. You're just going to try to get the message out there. So... Here is my version of a concert. So, oh gosh, that guy doesn't even have eyes. So anyway, the next person who gets it, they're going to look only at the previous page. So they'll look at this page and be like, okay, that's a rock star. So their word will be rock star, and they pass it over to the next person. The person who gets this will look and be like, oh, it's rock star. So they have to draw it. So their representation might be like a rock and then an arrow towards the star so somebody can get that it's a rock star well the next person who gets it looks at it and they say well it's a kid looking at the stars because see how it kind of looks like a face and I didn't do that on purpose like I drew it and then I looked at it to try to see obviously this is just a mock-up I drew all of these and they suck but <laughs> um, so they'll be like oh it's a kid looking at the stars and the next person gets this and goes like well I have to draw a kid looking at the stars so they draw a little girl looking at the stars and then they draw little flowers just like for decoration because they're walking or something you know well the next person looks at it and goes like well that's picking flowers so then they get um the next person who gets that draws a man with a flower on their hand and then maybe that person's going to be like the person the last person who gets it thinks it's valentine's so anyway that's how it works but then at the end the person's book gets back to the person and they share like everything and it's pretty funny because usually the drawings are done by multiple well obviously everybody does different ways of drawing and it's funny to look at how they represented it and stuff so it's a lot of fun um the dry erase markers i got these at the 99 cent store for four for uh, 99 cents so i only had to pay two dollars for that and then the way that i clipped it up here that i um what I did was I printed out the sheets, I cut them out, I cut out the little tabs for the numbers, and then I laminated them um, on the sheet, so four on the sheet, and then ran it through the laminator and cut that up and punched some holes and put some paper clips. These are paper clips that I straightened straighten out and then I, I made into a hoop and then I... I um, I looped them around each other so that they would stay like that. And so since this doesn't have to open, it's a really good way of making these little hoops inexpensive. So um, anyway, so the markers is, and like I said, we use apples to apples, so um, cards. So we didn't have to buy any cards or make them because that would have been a headache. And, you know, it's not as fun if you have to make up the cards. So this is what it came out to be, $11.60 for the for the books for eight of them and so it was oh that's my calculation so seven dollars for the laminating sheets which was the expensive part dry erase markers were two dollars printing and ink i just cal calculated it to the two dollars and then paper clips were like 16 cents because i figured there's a hundred of them in the pack and they cost a dollar so and I used 16 of them, so it was $11.16, and so yeah, that's how it is, so um, this one has, like I said, I made 8 of them, because it's an 8 player game, but they have the larger games where you get 12 players or more, so what I'm going to do, since my family is so large, I'm actually going to print some more of the last sheet of my thing, where it has like only the numbers and this, and I'm going to change up the numbers on it, so that it's 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way to whatever it is, 
I'm probably just gonna go up to like 13 because there's 13 people in my family and then leave it at that um, and add them to it so I will have to clip off these little um, clip um, clips that I made into hoops hoops but they were only a cent each so it doesn't matter it's just more like I have to do it again that sucks and so anyway I forgot what I was gonna tell you guys so anyway, that's how it works. Oh, and let me show you. This is actually a real life one. Somebody didn't clean off their little booklet. But um, we play this. We actually have apples to apples in Spanish too. And our family is Spanish and English. So um, we play it in a bilingual version. So you might not get some of this. But um, And since we have apples to apples, the Spanish version, we get the cards from there too. So um, his, and actually this one we just made up our our words so this person was garambuyo I have no clue what that is anyway and then they drew it and you're and then so the next person looks at that and goes like what the heck is that and so um my sister guessed that it was a key and so the next person drew a key a really good key obviously that was not me and then somebody guessed a key and it pretty much stayed a key through the whole thing I put this is my drawing <laughs> and I just put a key on there and there wasn't a lot of people in that game so I'm not gonna keep on going but basically somebody could have guessed like that's a lock or something but um anyway that's how it works so I just wanted to share with you guys a good way to use your laminating sheets and also um for I've been using them for when I go to Disneyland or on whatever trips where our whole family is going make a little tag for the lanyard and and then laminate it so that it you know if it gets wet or anything I know my um when the last time we we went to Disneyland we all like I made them all a tag with the hotel information our numbers in case the kids got lost or anything um and also so we can match up to each other you know um and then we all picked the villain and so we all were villains in our little tags I know my like my husband was Dr. Doof and my daughter was Ursula I was the Siamese cats my mom was like uh, Cinderella's stepmother my dad was Hopper from Bugs Life um, so it was just like different ones like that and we got a lot of good comments on that and it was a lot of fun so anyway thank you for watching and I hope that you guys will give it a try if you do have a laminator just to play the game it's really fun so bye have a nice day